Tell us then, how many more minerals are used in an electric vehicle compared to a conventional vehicle? So to build a conventional IC vehicle, you've got mostly steel, a bit of magnesium, a bit of copper and aluminium. But if you're going to build a, an EV, for example, electric vehicle, so you've got mostly aluminium, a lot less steel, uh, but now you've got lithium, you've got cobalt, you've got nickel, you've got rare earths, uh, and all of these things are, are relatively exotic compared to how we mine at the moment. Like, we do mine these things, but they're in much smaller volumes. They're trace elements compared to uh, uh, things like magnesium, but now we want to mine them at rates of like, say, copper and steel. Uh, and that's where the trouble starts. And we need to actually mine them uh, at quantities we don't have yet, we don't have as reserves. I'm going to put up one of the slides from uh, your latest presentation here. And if we see on this graph, you see the red bar graphs show how much is required to get to 2050 net zero. And next to it, you've got various uh, uh, colours showing known reserves and possible extra reserves uh, uh, on land and, and, and un under the water. And when it comes to copper... That we need far more copper than we even know there is now. Lithium, dramatically more lithium than we actually know, know exists now. Is it actually possible to find and extract the minerals here that are required? So, uh, not, not quite. That graph, the red column, is to replace the system as it is now completely. Like, all existing systems are now non-fossil fuels. Uh, the original... Uh, work was to be done by 2030. Now they're saying net zero by 2050, so presumably it might do half of it. Uh, yeah, so to answer your question, I don't believe it is possible uh, without some drastic change in what we think we're doing. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, we, we don't have the time, we don't have the capital, and the resources just aren't there. And, and so, no, we're not, we're not going to be able to do it. In, but that, to, we're not going to be able to hit the targets as they are now. Are you saying that actually is not the copper, the lithium, uh, the nickel, the cobalt, bolt? It's just not there? The, the, no, forget so about whether you, we you can mine remember, it or not, but whether or not it's actually there. You have to remember the world is made of minerals. The entire Andes mountain range is one giant copper deposit that's really, really low grade. There is metals and seawater. So it's not a question of running out of copper. It's a question of our ability to extract that yep. copper in a form that is useful. And that's where the trouble starts. And at the moment, you would rate the chances of being able to do that by 2050 as impossible? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, we're not going to be able to do it. Thanks for, thanks for talking to us, Professor. I appreciate it. We'll keep in touch. That's... Um, Professor, Associate Professor Simon Michaud there uh, in, in Finland. Uh, the numbers on this are astounding and we'll keep looking at it because you're being sold a pup. People are telling you we can just do this, batten down the hatches, we can do it. We can't. And the other side of this, of course, is the expense.